Hello everyone! Today I'm going to share with you my highly requested straight eyebrow routine. And I actually haven't done an eyebrow tutorial in years, so I'm really happy to share this with you. After visiting Seoul, South Korea, I was really inspired to commit to straight brows. I do think that it's fun to change it up, and a lot of you have been loving the way straight brows look on me. They're not perfect because, again, they're still in the process of growing out. My hairs have been growing a very specific way for the last 10 years or so, meaning that growing them out is a pretty painful process. I will be incorporating a voiceover because it is kind of hard for me to do my brows and talk at the same time. So in order to make sure they look good while I'm showing you how to do them, I decided that it would be best to voice over this section. So now without any further ado, let me show you how it's done. I'm starting with brush 22 from Wayne Goss to remove any excess foundation or powder that may be on my brows. Then I'm going to take my drawing pencil and I'm going to create a brow shape starting from the bottom of the arch, flattening it out and dragging it out towards the end, toward my temple. This is the most important part because this is where it creates a straight shape, the tail. Since my brows are much fuller towards the front, I have to create the illusion of density and of course color with pencil and powder. I like to apply the powder afterwards because it really accentuates the effect and the structure of the pencil and I like to use a backwards motion with the brush because it really helps to blend the powder into the brow hairs nearest to the follicle so that it looks like real hair and it creates density. And so this is the step that you want to take your time with because this way, if you spend a lot of time blending in the color, your brow will look the most natural. Then take the spoolie, of course, and groom the brow hairs into place, further blending the color, especially targeting those pesky little hairs that may be detracting from your overall brow look. Now I'm going back with brush 21 using short, purposeful, firm strokes to define the front corner of my brow. And I like to create a slightly boxy shape to match the natural growth on my other brow. Then I'm going to use tapping motions and really press the color into the rest of the brow. Then I'm going to use a little bit more of my Shiomura brow pencil to really perfect the flat arch. And this step is crucial if you are transitioning from arched brows as I am because it helps to even out the shape and make it look as straight as possible. Once I'm pretty satisfied with the shape and color of my brow, I like to use a little bit of concealer on a clean brush 21 and really just straighten out the shape of the bottom of my brow and I like to use a little on top as well to cover the highest point of my arch. This step really helps to add polish to the brow look. It's not absolutely necessary but I do think that it really helps clean things up. The key is not to use too much, just blend it out really well. And last but not least is tinted brow gel. I like to use a little bit at the back half right where the brow ends just to tame those little pesky hairs that I'm too scared to pluck. And that completes my Korean-inspired straight eyebrow tutorial. It does take more effort than it appears to, so it's all about practice and really understanding where to apply the color. So of course, the right tools and the right brushes will help you achieve this. So now I'm going to zoom out because this is a little up close and personal, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Since I've had arched brows my entire life, it has been a process. My hand has had to learn not to arch all the way up, but I will say that once you get the hang of it, it does get a lot easier. And I've been using these three Wayne Goss tools, his new brush set for $55 to help really create a smooth look. So because my eyebrows grow all over the place, but they're really fine and really sparse, it's hard to find tools that really work well for my really particular eyebrows. And because they're in the process of growing out, they do look a little bit messy. So luckily this Wayne Goss trio has made my transition from super arched to very straight Korean inspired brows a lot easier on me. I wasn't sure if brush 22 would be useful for me but because my brows have a mind of their own and grow all over the place it really does help to have this to tame and define and show me exactly where I need to place my eyebrow products. If you're blessed with naturally full brows and you just need a bit of color I actually recommend taking brush number 22's full side tapping it into a little bit of brow powder and just brushing it through and then combing the brow hair 
layers into place. Now if you're like me and not blessed in the eyebrow department or if you even have thinning brow hairs which is very common, I recommend brush number 21 as your most indispensable tool because not only will this be good for product placement or even just blending out of brow pencil, you can use this to apply concealer underneath your brow to clean up any excess product or just simply to sharpen up your brow look like I did at the end of the tutorial. So I love this one because it's a multitasker. You can set color down, you can blend it out, and you can place concealer with it. So this is a great tool. And I also like that it's a lot more stiff. It's not harsh on the skin, but it helps create more definition as opposed to the T9 by Chikuhoto. This one is much larger, much softer, so I recommend this one more for blending as opposed to placing down color. Now last but not least for the spoolie, and the spoolie is always a kind of hotly disputed product because some people don't think it's necessary. However, if you wear foundation, whether it's liquid or powder, you can use this to clean up the brows and remove any excess product before starting your eyebrow routine. Now I use the brush number 22 to do that today just because I find that with my fine brow hairs, I actually like the way this feels. I use number 23 instead to help blend out the color that I set down with brush number 21. And this boils down to preference, but you can actually tip the head of the spoolie forward and that way you can get all angles. It's kind of like the idea behind Lancome's Grandiose Mascara because that way you can get every angle and every little hair as opposed to when the spoolie is straight, which is actually how I prefer to use my GSN 15. This one is a lot sturdier, a lot stiffer, so this will actually remove color. So if you apply too much, you can use this. But I have heard reviews that this one feels a little harsh on the skin if you have very delicate skin. So just keep that in mind because after trying dozens of spoolies over the years on my very fine brows, I do think Wayne perfected the spoolie. It's not too soft, not too firm. You can actually use this to apply mascara as well, but I love this strictly for brows. And again, that's just my preference. If you're interested in the Wayne Goss Brow Kit, I highly recommend you check it out at beautylish.com where it's available exclusively. And if you had any questions regarding the Shomar products, feel free to leave any questions you have down below in the comments. I'm still getting used to the look of straight brows and having to go through the process but once my brows fill in once my actual brow hairs grow in I do think that I'll come to love the look so much more and that way it'll feel like my own eyebrow but thank you so much for tuning in everyone and I hope you guys found this helpful and I'll see you soon bye